All right, so for this next video, I wanna take a look at a recursive binary search. So in this particular case, I've already got the program ready to go for this so that I can primarily focus in this particular case on trying to explain exactly how this program works and to talk a little bit about uh, precisely how that recursive search method works. So I wanna briefly go through two different parts of this. First, we're gonna go through the main method just to make sure we understand what this particular implementation of this program is meant to do and then I also want to talk about this search method so you understand the more general part of this which is implementing this recursive binary search so going through this from the top I've gone ahead and imported the scanner class this way the user can go ahead and provide some input about exactly what number in our array that we want to try to search for so then when we come into the main method for our recursive search We've got a, an object of that scanner class. So we're going to use this keyboard object reading from our standard input stream. We've created an int array called numbers. Its size is going to be 100. So this is going to hold all of the numbers from 1 to 100. I've then got two other int values here. So we've got number and position. Uh, the number is going to be what the user provides. So this is going to be whatever number they want to look for inside of the array. And then this position is going to be the value that we get back from our search method. This will either remain negative one if we do not find the item, that uh, integer in the array, or it's going to become the position in the array where we find that value. And because of the fact that we're doing this with the numbers one through 100 for an integer array of size 100, basically the position is just gonna be the value that we're looking for minus one. So like to give you an example of this, the very first item in this array, uh, the one that's going to be at position 0, is going to be the number 1. And if we go to the very end, the last value in this array at position 99 is going to be the value 100. Okay. So then to actually get that array set up to populate it with all of these integer values, we're just going to take the index as we iterate over this array. We'll go ahead and add 1 to it to go ahead and put that value into that particular position. So at position zero, we've got the value one. At position one, we've got the value two, so forth and so on. Then we're gonna go ahead and have a print statement here. We're gonna ask the user, what number are you searching for? We'll go ahead and read off using the scanner method next int to get that value. We'll assign that to this number. We're then going to uh, try to get the position. So we're going to assign to the position variable the result that is returned from our search method. And our search method is going to require a couple of different values. So we got a couple of different arguments or parameters that we have to pass in. The first is going to be numbers. So we need the array that we want to perform this uh, binary search on. We've also got number. So we need the, uh, the, the value in the array that we are looking for. And then these last two, zero, and then numbers dot length minus one. These are just going to be the starting and ending positions for this array. So the first time that you call the search method, it's always expected that you're going to be using zero and then numbers.length minus one. But of course, depending on the size of your array, these two values will change. You know, you'll need to modify them based on uh, where the middle of the array is located. So uh, as we recursively call search, these two values are going to change and it will be dependent on uh, the, the size of the array. And we'll see that a little bit in a little bit more detail when I start talking about the search method. And then finally here at the very end, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick check. So after we get some value assigned to position, we'll check to see if that value is negative one. If it's still negative one, what we initialized it to, that's gonna tell us that the number was not in the array. So we'll go ahead and print that to the console. Otherwise, if the value is something other than negative one, then it must be the position in the array where that number is located. So then we'll just go ahead and say the number is at position and then print out that position variables value. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and take a look at this search method that we're calling right here on line 18. So if we come over to the definition for it, so we can see that it's gonna return an int. So the int that it's returning is gonna be the position in the array where we found the value. And it's taking four things. We've got our four parameters here, some integer array that we're gonna call just R array for sh or short for array we've got our int value so this is going to be what we're looking for inside of the array we've got our starting position and we've got our ending position and as I mentioned before these two things are going to change over time 
as we are um, continuously searching through this array. So then coming over here, this very first little thing that I've got right here, this is effectively going to serve as uh, one of my two base cases for this. So this is going to be the base case uh, if we fail to find the value inside of the array. And what's going to happen here is as we are constantly modifying the values of start and end, as they are slowly kind of collapsing in on each other, eventually we're going to reach a point where they will overlap each other. So start will become greater than end. When that happens, that means that we no longer have anything to search for or we don't have any uh, items to search through anymore. So that tells us that we've reached the end of our search, but we didn't find the item. So we're just going to go ahead and return negative one. This next line right here, we're going to go ahead and do a quick calculation to get the middle position. So as we recall about a binary search, we know that we always want to look at the middle position between our start and end. So we're just going to go ahead and do start plus end divided by two. So that much still stays the same from when we looked at our iterative approach to the search method. So when we do it with just a traditional loop of some kind. The part that's going to change the most is going to be what's left of this. So this whole if, else, if, else portion that we have here. So we've got three different cases that we want to check for. These cases are very similar to what we saw in our iterative approach to binary search. The one difference is going to be what we do in each of those cases. So rather than just getting some value, instead what we want to go ahead and do is make a return. So we're going to do some kind of return statement and we have some additional method calls. So we've got recursive calls to our search method. So the first case right here, this is going to be our second base case. So this is the base case if we are successfully able to find the item in the array. So if the value is equivalent to the uh, item that is in that middle position of our array, then we're just gonna go ahead and return the middle position. So we're returning middle, whatever position in the array that happens to be, and that's what we're gonna use for this variable up here. Alternatively, we could run into two other cases. So we could have one case where the middle position is less than what our value is. So that tells us that our value should actually be in the upper half of the array that we're looking at. So if we kind of remap this out again to make sure that we understand what's going on there. So say this is our array, say like right here in the very middle is the value that we checked, but we found that our uh, the value that we're looking for is greater than that middle. That tells us that it's gonna be over here. So the only thing that we're gonna be concerned with is this upper half of the array after that. So in that case, we wanna go ahead and modify our start and end. Well, in this case, this ending position is still going to stay the same regardless of whether or not we're looking over the entire array or just this upper half of the array. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that alone. That's just gonna stay end. The part that's going to change is gonna be our start. So originally start was way over here but now we see we only want to look at this upper half. So we're going to go ahead and take our middle position, but we're going to add one to that so we can only focus on this upper, uh, this upper space of our array. So then we're going to go ahead and call search again, but now we're looking at only this upper half and we'll just continue that same approach as before. Alternatively, we might have the opposite case. So in that case, go ahead and remove our value. And now we might imagine that our value is less than the middle. So in this case, now we want to go ahead and again still pass in the array and the value, but now our start and middle are going to ch or our start and end are going to change in a slightly different way. So start, that one will at least stay the same because regardless of whether we're looking over the entire array or just the lower half of the array, the start will still stay the same, but the end is going to change now. So in this case, the end, instead of being way over here, is now going to be the middle minus one. So now we're just looking at this lower uh, the lower half of the space of the array. Okay. So then of course we'll go ahead and take this new version of it. So we're looking at just this lower half. We'll do another recursive call and we'll repeat that process as we step through this. Okay. So we're going to continuously do this where we will continuously reduce this down. So let's go ahead and remove that. So let's say that when we first try this, maybe our value is less than the middle. So then we're trying this new one. We've got a new middle somewhere around here. When we try this, we might find that the value is either less than or greater than this new middle. So depending on where that's located, maybe if we place the value here, 
So in that particular case, we had a particular value for end that we used for this new array from here over to here. So that end is going to stay the same. Our start is going to change, so we shrink that down. And as I mentioned before, this will constantly just keep reducing. Eventually, you're going to reach a point where the these two, uh, the start and end, these two lines that we're using, will eventually kind of collapse in on each other. So eventually, they're going to kind of reach a point like this. And then eventually, they're going to overlap each other. So eventually, one of these will go over the other. When that happens, that tells us that we failed. Otherwise, if we don't have this happen, instead, we actually find our value somewhere in the middle as we continuously do this, then we can go ahead and return that instead. And that tells us that we were able to successfully find the item in the array. So now if we go ahead and come over here, we'll go ahead and compile this. So I have a recursive binary search. And then we'll go ahead and run it. So we'll ask, what number are you searching for? So let's say we're looking for a number like uh, 75, for example. So if we do that, it'll say the number is at position 74. So this tells us that our array is able to successfully find this item in the array, and it's going to go ahead and print that out, print out the position of that item. So let's say then we try this with some number that's not inside of this array. So I said before that it's gonna be the numbers one through 100. Maybe if we try something like zero, it'll tell us the number is not in the array. Alternatively, we could try a number that's too large, so maybe like 101. And again, we'll see that the number is not in the array. Okay. So at this point, this is going to uh, complete everything for this recursive binary search. Uh, again, just like the previous videos, I would recommend that if you are still a little bit uncertain about exactly how this works, to take some time to review the code for this, uh, maybe review some sections of this video to make sure that you fully understand this. Uh, going into the next couple of videos, the last two that I want to wrap up on with this, we're going to be looking at that Towers of Hanoi problem and then that Sierpinski's uh, gasket problem.